Good evening, you pilgrim. This is indeed the day the Lord hath made. We have rejoiced. We are rejoicing. We will rejoice and be glad in him. Father God Almighty, we thank you that we can rejoice and be glad in you. For as we proceed through the services tonight, let us remember why we are here. Let us remember who brought us here. Let us remember who is keeping us here. And Father, we know that it is you. So we invite you into our midst. Let us feel you moving upon the main altars of our hearts as we go through this worship service, knowing that we are worshiping the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Almighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Let the whole church say amen. amen. Our scripture reading tonight is found in the 22nd chapter of Luke. Luke 22, and we'll be reading the first 12 verses. Luke chapter 22, beginning with the first verse, and read down to the 12. And it reads, Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then into Satan and to Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, Where wilt thou we, that we prepare? And he said unto them, Behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. And ye shall say unto the good men of the house, The master saith unto thee, where is the guest chamber, where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples, and he shall show you a large upper room furnished there, make ready. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. We're going to continue standing, please, as we do our hymn, I Know It Was the Blood. Say one more time. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died up on the cross. the blood for me. Mm, they marched him up the hill. They marched him up the hill. They marched him up the hill for me. 
one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross, and I know it was the blood for me. They nailed him to the tree. They nailed him to the cross. They nailed him to the cross for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood. For me, they pierced him in the side. 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 For me, oh, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. The blood came streaming down. Oh, the blood came streaming down. The blood came streaming down. The blood came streaming down, streaming down, streaming down for me. Oh, one day when I was lost. He died upon the cross, and I know it was the blood for me. Well, this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. It's good to be in the house of God one more time. On this Maundy Thursday, we want to thank God that God has blessed us uh, to make it to this point uh, in Holy Week where we come together uh, to celebrate what the Lord has done. Before we talk about the meaning of Maundy Thursday, uh, if you would, uh, we, I want to get you out of here in just a few minutes. Uh, we won't be here tonight very long, so I want you to do me a favor. Uh, if you are able, uh, just stand up wherever you are. And just reach around and just greet whoever, whoever you see around you uh, and just let them know uh, that the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. Thank you so very much, everyone, for coming tonight. Uh, this is Maundy Thursday, and the reason why this is called Maundy Thursday is because the word Maundy uh, is another one of those Latin words that we still use. 
Mandi in the Latin uh, comes from the concept of mandatum, mandatum, which means man, which where we get the word mandate from. Mandate. Mandate, the reason why, the reason why it's mandated, it is it's mandated is because uh, we have been commanded. The Bible says, uh, we're, in fact, we're going through our, we just had our last, uh, that's right, Deacon Cunningham, our last deacon's training uh, meeting, and we told, we explained to our new incoming deacons uh, that there are two ordinances that we, uh, represent, we, we represent that we uh, follow in the Baptist church, and those are that of baptism by immersion and communion, the Lord's Supper. And we, the reason why Maundy Thursday is what it is is because we say that we've been commanded. We've been commanded by Jesus to use this opportunity to come together in fellowship, to eat the bread, and to take the cup, and to celebrate his death until he comes. That is our commandment. Amen. And so that, so anytime somebody asks you, what is, my, my baby just asked me, baby, daddy, what does Maundy mean? Someone can, you can now tell them, Maundy means commandment. We've been commanded uh, to celebrate the Lord's Supper. And so this is why we do what we do. So we're going to have our choir come. Amen. I think probably we may need to come down just a little bit on the choir monitors. That, that may be the concern. Just come down just a little bit on the choir monitors. Uh, and that may, may cut down a little bit on what we're dealing with. And so uh, cut down on the feedback just a bit. So uh, the choir is going to come and offer us a selection. I will be back with a very brief message. And then we're going to celebrate communion together. And this is important, church, because we need to understand in Holy Week uh, what the Lord Jesus did for us. Amen? Amen. And so we're going to come back with a brief message, and then we're going to take communion together, and then we're going to take up an offering, amen, because we want to just ce celebrate what the Lord has done for us, and then I'm going to let you out of here, amen, and it should be just a little bit after 8 o'clock, and then you can go home and get ready for this wonderful weekend that we have coming up, amen? Amen. amen. We praise God for what God is going to do in our midst on this evening, and so we're going to ask our choir to now come, and I'll be right back.
lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Praise God. We thank God uh, that we can say that our hearts, minds, and souls belong to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so we're grateful for what the Lord has done for us. And we, how many people tonight, I'm, we're not going to be uh, belaboring the time. We got plenty of things that we got going on this weekend. But how many people can say today that I love you, Lord, today? Come on, church. Come on, church. Do you love the Lord? Amen. We thank God that we love him because he first loved us, and we thank God for what God is going, has done, is doing, and will do uh, for us. Uh, if you would, turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 22. I'm going to pray real quick, but then but just have your Bibles there. Father, we thank you and praise you uh, for the fact that you have loved us so much. And all you ask us to do is love you in return. And Lord God, we pray in the name of Jesus that your spirit would fill this place. Fill me with the Holy Ghost so that I may speak your words with boldness and do not allow me to speak an enticing word of human wisdom. But by demonstration of your spirit and power, make your presence felt, known, and realized in this place. So that we, your people, may demonstrate the love that you so richly deserve. We thank you and praise you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Luke 22, uh, go with me to verse number 15. We're reading verses 15 through 23. Be able to stand, stand with us in honor of God's word. It reads, and he said unto them, with desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat of it until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, somebody say behold. The hand of him that betrays me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goes it is, it is, as it is determined, but woe unto the man by whom he is betrayed. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, this evening, as the Holy Ghost is instructed, I want to talk a few moments from the subject, the blessing is at the table. The blessing is at the table. A few years ago in the Middle Ages, an event would take place that would become known as the Black Dinner. The Black Dinner was a dinner. It was a dinner where the boy king of Scotland and his court would throw a dinner 
for some people from the Douglas clan. They invited the Douglas clan, and the boy king had some counselors who Reverend Cunningham didn't like the Douglas clan all that much. And they invited them to dinner under the pretenses of peace and under the invitation of fellowship. And they invited them to dinner, and once they were there at the dinner, the boy king saw them place the head of a black bull on the table. And in Scotland at this time, this was the symbol of death. And the courtiers looked at the members of the clan and declared their judgment and said, you all have betrayed betray the crown and you are worthy of death they took them out held a, a trial in a kangaroo court and condemned them to death and killed members of that clan but it all started at the table it's interesting brothers and sisters that we have to be careful not to accept every invitation to dinner Sometimes people don't invite you to dinner to help you live, but to make sure you die. That's not what happened at this table. This table is not a table of cursing. This is a table of blessing. This is not a table of destruction. This is a table of reconstruction. This is not a table that brings us to darkness. This is a table that allows us to see the light. This is not a table that causes us to die. This is a table that lets us know we can have everlasting life. At this table, we come to find the blessings of God. Jesus invited his disciples saying I with great desire yes, sir. I'm eager I'm excited about eating this Passover meal with you and one would understand why Jesus was excited about a Passover meal he's Jewish and Jews wanted to celebrate the Passover this was a meal of freedom this was a meal of liberation this was a meal of that celebrated God's destruction of their bondage. It was the Passover church. Don't, 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 don't miss me now. You have to stay with me tonight because this is important to understand why we're here in celebrating this moment. The Passover was important because it was the time when Israel's received, Israel received a new start. They had been in Egypt for 400 some years. Paul says 434 years. And after all this time of being in Egypt, now God had brought the reckoning. God had judged Egypt. God said that you had allowed your, your, your pharaohs to come and your rulers to come and they enslaved my people and even tossed their boys into the Nile River. And now it's time for judgment. Now it's time for God to send his judgment against Egypt. He said, I'm going to judge all the gods of Egypt. And we should never miss that church because Pharaoh himself was a god. In the Egyptian culture, he was a god king. And God judged Pharaoh and said, I'm not only going to judge Pharaoh, but I'm going to judge the next Pharaoh. And so Pharaoh's firstborn son and all the firstborn of Egypt died one night. And they died and that death was so great, church, that the Bible says that the Egyptians said, y'all, we will help you get out of here. We go not only loosen the chains, but we'll make sure that we give you some bread and some jewelry. Please get out. Please leave with a quickness. Get out of here as quickly as possible. And in one night, one night, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. One night, God broke 400 years. One night, 
God took away all of the suffering that they had one night. God shut down the system that had kept them in bondage. All those years, God summed up in one night and said, I'm going to set you free. Because God can do it all in one night. Lord have mercy. I, I got to move on. I'm going to save some of this for Easter Sunday. So, 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 so the Bible teaches us that the Passover was given. There was a lamb that was slain and they had to put the blood on the doorpost. And as the pestilence, God sent a pestilence. God sent the angel of death throughout the camps. And he made a separation between his people in Egypt. And in that night, God liberated his people. He saved his people. He saved his people from bondage. And from that point on, God said, this is going to be the beginning of the year for you. You don't date your time based on slavery. You date your time based on freedom. The year starts over. Now is the time. And so here the Messiah comes, Luke chapter 4. Jesus said, this is the year, the acceptable year of the Lord. He says that the time is no longer marked by Nisan. The time is no longer marked by the first month that you were freed from Egypt. God is doing something new. Now is the time when I declare the time because the Bible says the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. Now is the time. It's not based any longer, church, on when they were freed from Egypt. And Jesus said, the time is not based on me. He said, this is the year that you will see God's favor. And from that time on, Jesus was saying, you will understand freedom differently. And so Jesus had said, I'm I'm eager to celebrate this Passover meal with you. Not just because of what God has done, but because of what God will do. God has promises that he will ever keep. He will always keep what he said. And so he invited his disciples, said, find me an upper room. Find us a place to eat and they recline. You know, in the ancient world, you don't, you don't sit like we sit today. You, you lean on each other. And they sat at the table and they began to eat the Passover. And Jesus was trying to tell them that what you saw before pointed to what's happening right now. And God is doing something new and fresh. And he's taking what was and fulfilling it, making it complete, making it something not only for Israel to be free from Egypt, but for the whole world to be free from their sins. He says now the Passover is here fully fulfilled to be completed and for you and I to accept from now on that we are no longer in chains, that we are no longer in bondage, that we have been called to sit at the feet of Jesus and declare free at last. Y'all, y'all, I wish y'all felt like it tonight. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. We're free at last. That's what we can say. Because there's blessing at the table. And can I tell you, brothers and sisters, this, 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 the, the, the t Spirit teaches us that if we're to see where Jesus is, what Jesus is dealing with, in order to understand it, we've got to understand there's blessing there, that there's life there. To understand it, we've got to understand, church, that the table, if there's blessing there, that points beyond. This table, the, the table there points always beyond. Here, here's, here's, what, here's what I'm trying to tell you. It, look, look with me in your Bibles. It, it, you'll see it. He, he says this, verse 15. I wanted to do this. I desired to do this with great desire. He says this, verse 16. For I say unto you, I will not eat any more thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And then he said, he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this, divide it amongst yourselves. He says, for I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. You missed your shout. He said, listen, he said, I want you to be clear now. He says, I'm not going to eat anymore of this unleavened bread. 
At the, at the Passover meal, you would eat on the unleavened bread. You would, there would be no leaven in your house, no yeast in your house. But you would eat the bread of haste. And Israel would look back every year and remember how God gave them the bread of haste because it was time for them to get out of bondage. He said, you need the bread of haste so you can leave because tonight is going to be a night of nights. This won't be, there won't be any time like this uh, ever again. And so you have to remember what God did for you. And so Jesus says, in the same way you remember what happened before, you have to understand and, and celebrate what God did. He says this, that God's about to do something else. God always has something else. Lord have mercy. God always has something else. Y'all still in here. God has always has something else. What Jesus was saying is this. He says, now listen now, something's about to happen. He says, but I'm not going to eat this until. He said, I'm not going to drink this until. You still miss your shout. He says that, that, that I'm eating it now. He said, but I have to eat it now, but there, I'm not going to eat it for a second, but there's going to be a time after. I'm not going to eat it for a moment, but there's going to be a time after the block. There's going to be a time after I suffer. There's going to be a time after I go through. There's going to be a time after I have to face my enemies. There's going to be a time after I'm messed up and, and get, get, get confused and people leave me. There's going to be a time after the disciples leave me all by myself. I want to tell you, I, I'm, I'm going to eat it tonight. He said, but I want to tell you, I'm not going to eat it anymore. But there's going to come a time well, I will eat it again because the kingdom is still going to come. Look at somebody and say, can't nothing stop the kingdom. He said, listen, listen, listen. I want to be clear with your church. I want to be clear with you that when you look at the table, the table always points beyond itself. Y'all, 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 look, 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 look I, I, let me tell you why I do what I do. I don't do what I do for the day. I don't do what I do for the day. I, I don't get up in the morning, brush my teeth, uh, make sure my hair looks all right, put some lotion on, and get in my car, drive up to this church, uh, and do the stuff I have to do to make sure that the, the trains keep on coming in the dock, and we're able to keep on, that the world keeps on spinning that new pilgrim. I don't do that just for the day. I do it for tomorrow. I do it because there's going to be a time uh, where God is going to come. I, I do it because it turns is on the way. I wish I had some people in here who understood that I don't live for the day. If you just live for the day, your life would be worthless. But you live because the Lord has given you a promise that you will have a tomorrow. The table points beyond itself. It tells you that you ain't in this thing by yourself. It tells you that even when you have you see militarism and capitalism and you see racism and these things intertwine and the world looks all messed up, that it always won't be like this. That's why we do what we do. We do it because the enemy can't stop the Lord from bringing tomorrow. Right, Lord have mercy I wish I had a praying church I want somebody to understand that when we come down to this table and you take the cup and you take that bread that it speaks to something that's going to happen you may not see it all now I wish I had some witnesses in here you may not see all of what God has promised you now but you ain't got to see it all now listen here church I want to tell you I ain't seen all of what God is going to do in my life but I take courage because the Lord says wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will strengthen thine heart is there anybody in here that's waiting on what the Lord has promised the kingdom is going to come the kingdom can't be stopped God said the blessing of the table was not just in eating that, that piece of bread and drinking that cup. It, it may nourish you now, but God has something greater. And I want to encourage somebody tonight. 
Don't you let go of God. In this season, in this moment, when we come to celebrate at the table, God is telling you, I got something more. I got something else. That something else is coming. I want to tell you, not only is there beyond, but this blessing is also in his brokenness. You'll see it. It's right here in the text. The Bible says he took the bread. After he said, now listen, I'm going to eat this again, but I want to tell you something. I'm doing something right now. He took the bread and he gave thanks. And he broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper saying, this cup is a new testament in my blood which is shed for you. And this is this verse 21. He says, but behold, don't miss that part, the hand of him that betrays me is with me <laughs> at the table. Look, 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 don't, don't, don't read the Bible too fast, you'll miss something. You see, we read past that so many years that we forgot what was happening. You see, you see, you see, Jesus said, this is my body, which is broken for you. He says, this, this body is given for you as long as you do it, as long as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. He took the bread that they had eaten every year and redefined it and said that now you're not just eating it because of the quickness of your leaving Egypt. Now you're eating the bread to show the fellowship that you have with God. To show that God has now bound himself to you in a way that he has never bound himself before. God is doing something new. Now the son of God is here. And the word was made flesh. I told you that. And he was saying that the body is now symbolized. The body of Jesus is now symbolized by the bread. The bread was pointing to a greater reality. And Jesus said, now listen, be careful. Now when you, when you we understand this, he says, now take this cup. This cup represents my blood, which is shed for you. Lord have mercy. Jesus ain't gone to the cross yet, Reverend Cunningham. But he said, the blood is shed for you. Because Jesus knew by faith he had already accomplished what he would accomplish. Y all, y all, I'm gonna talk, we'll talk to you about that later. He said, the blood is shed for you. And he said, now take this cup now. I want you to understand what I'm about to do tomorrow, what I do on Friday, when I get up on that cross, I want you to understand why those nails are in my hands. I want you to understand why there's blood that's coming out of me. I want you to understand that that's not just a, a person who's been wrongly accused and couldn't get off by the Innocence Project being killed. He said, no, 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 no. I want you to understand that God is in this. You may see somebody who's been wrongly convicted and put up on trumped up charges in a kangaroo court. He said, but I want you to understand something. This ain't just somebody who's being condemned. Yes, an injustice was done. He said, but I want you to understand why the injustice was done. I want you to understand that the injustice was done so that justice might run down like water and righteousness I wish I had a praying church like a mighty stream I got you I want you to understand I'm being condemned yes I'm being condemned but I'm being condemned so you can be justified I'm being condemned I'm taking what belongs to you he said this this is my body it's for you this blood is being shed for you I ain't doing it for me I'm doing it for you and now I wish I had a Baptist church because if a Baptist church was in the room somebody would have got up and started running around the sanctuary because you understand that Jesus didn't do it for himself I don't know why Jesus loved me. I don't know why Jesus cared. I don't know why he sacrificed his life. But I'm so glad 
Lord have mercy. It's all right. Uh, I, 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 can't, I can't give y'all too much tonight because I got to preach tomorrow. Uh, but I got to tell somebody something. Uh, I don't know about you, but when I get to a point uh, in my life where things look dark and bleak all around me, I start to remind myself uh, that Jesus loved me. Uh, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. He didn't just say it. He showed me something. He gave himself for me. Look. He said this bread, just like you break this bread, understand, I'm going to be broken for you. And the way you drink this wine, just like you had to crush those grapes. The grapes had to shed their own insides, the, the blood of the grape, in order to give life to somebody else. In the same way, I'm going to give my very body and my very blood for you. So when you obey this commandment, never forget what, why you're doing it. Don't get so concerned about how you look. Don't get so concerned if you end up touching the communion table. I wish I had a church. Don't get so concerned about who's in the sanctuary or who's not in the sanctuary. When you come around this table, remember what's most important, that I was broken. I was broken for you. They, they pierced me in my side for you. They put me on a cross for you. And I did it for you so that, I, so that you can say that he was wounded. I'm going to my seat church for my transgressions and he was bruised for my iniquities and so you have to remember this I'm going church I'm about to sit down my time is up I've got to tell you this don't forget now that Jesus is saying all of this with his betrayer at the table Jesus knew that there was somebody who was going to stab him in the back. In fact, don't, 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 don't miss the scripture. Earlier in Luke 22, the Bible says that Satan had filled Judas. Satan was right there taunting Jesus, looking at Jesus, smiling at Jesus like he was a friend. The devil had gotten Judas and Judas was willing to allow the enemy to use him. And Jesus said, I know that my betrayer is in the room. In fact, he's right here with me. Read the scripture at the table. I know my enemy is sitting right here but that's why Jesus said the kingdom is still gonna come because he said he'll make a table before you in the presence of your enemies even though the enemy was at the table Jesus said we still gonna eat y'all missed your shout and so they were eating and enjoying and Jesus said yeah the betrayer is here he said but don't worry God got the betrayer can I tell you something don't worry about your enemies don't ever worry about folk who won't try to get you don't worry because God got you and as long as God got you your enemies can never overcome you the Lord is my light I feel like preaching now and my salvation whom shall I fear the the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Even when my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they failed. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. When the Lord is on your side, you don't hear what I'm saying. You know why? Because some of y'all ain't praise God yet. Because if it had not been, I'm about to say that for the Lord who was on my side, I wouldn't be preaching to y'all tonight. But I'm here tonight because even though the betrayer was at the table even though the betrayer was at the table what the Lord was going to do was going to be able to compensate even for the betrayal that was about to happen to him you, you, you don't see what I'm feeling me let me tell you what, what I mean can I tell you what I mean? Because Jesus was at the table and because Jesus was at the table and he knew there was blessing, so much blessing at that table, it would be able to handle even what Judas was going to try to do to him. There was so much blessing at the table that nothing the devil was able to do would stop God from doing what God promised that he would do. Can I tell you how this works? 
works. There was a story I found out. Deacon Smith, there's a story of this young lady who had a party. Yes, Lord. And she had a party and she had her friends come. And all the friends came to that party. And while all the friends came to that party and while they were there surrounding the table, everybody started ordering off the menu. Uh, they were looking uh, for the most expensive thing uh, that was on the menu. Uh, some of y'all been to that party before. Uh, they were looking for the most expensive thing uh, on the menu. Uh, and so they were looking all around uh, on the menu uh, trying to find something uh, that they couldn't afford uh, to pay for on their own. Uh, and so because uh, they thought somebody else uh, was going to pay their bill, uh, they were ordering all of this food. Uh, and when the check came, they were expecting for them to divide the ticket up. And they were expecting that somebody else was going to pay the bill. But they found out that the girl said, I ain't paying for this. It's my birthday. And somebody else said, I ain't paying for this. I'm here with her. And ain't nobody know who was going to pay the bill. And somebody ended up getting stuck with the bill. And they end up having to clean the kitchen because they could not afford to pay for what they ordered. Can I tell you something? My testimony is that one day I found out I was at a party and I was ordering stuff off the menu that I could not afford. I couldn't afford to lie. I couldn't afford to cheat. I couldn't afford to do the wicked things that I had done. But I found out, y'all don't hear what I'm saying, I found out that I did not have the money to pay my own bill, but I heard, I said I heard, I heard the hymn writer say, Jesus paid I said Jesus paid it all and all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain but he washed it white as snow. Is there anybody in the church on this Monday Thursday who can thank our God that at the table you found out you could not pay your own bill but the blood of Jesus Jesus uh, washed you uh, white as snow. Uh, can you give the Lord some praise uh, that when we come to the table, you found out uh, your bill has been paid. Uh, can you shout yes? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank God. I didn't have to pay my own bill. But Jesus paid it all. And that's what we find out, church. That's the story of all of our lives. The story of all of our lives. See, when you're in sin, you ain't looking at how much your tab is. You're just sinning and sinning and sinning. And you might be grinning too. Sinning and grinning. Smiling while you do it. And getting in more debt and more debt and more debt and you come to the end of life in sin and God says here's the tab and if you don't know Jesus you'll find out you got to clean the kitchen but I thank God tonight that I came down that aisle one day and I gave Jesus my heart and he told me that all my sins had been paid for. Is that your testimony tonight? If that's your testimony, give God praise. If you are thankful that the Lord has paid your bill. In this moment, come on deacons who are here. We just want to make sure that nobody came in church tonight who heard this message and is not sure 
if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We don't want you to leave this place unsure if you know the Lord. If you don't know the Lord, come down here. Don't, don't, don't debate it. Don't, don't question it. Just, just follow the leadership of the Spirit. God is talking to you if you don't know Jesus. We want you to come and give your life to Christ because Jesus has paid your bill. But if you don't know him, you will try to figure out how you're going to pay God in the end. God says, no, you can't pay me for all the sins you have committed. But Jesus paid for it. He shed his blood for us so that we might receive eternal life. Is there anyone in the room? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. All right, now we want you just to take a moment, we want to do this solemnly as we prepare to come to the table of the Lord. We want to do this with solemnity, that is seriousness. You have a lot of concerns and cares at home, a lot of things going on at your job. Put all that aside for a moment. Put all your thoughts on Jesus. Remember what he's done for you. So when you come to this table, when you receive the Lord's cup and this piece of bread that shows you that his very body, his very flesh, he sacrificed for us. Do that remembering do that remembering the great sacrifice. And not only just for you, but for you to join him in sacrificing for others. Let's pray. God and Father of our Lord Jesus, we thank you for the fact that Jesus died for us. He died for the sins of the whole world, that the nations should come and give themselves in repentance. You came and allowed yourself to die. You died so that we might be free from sin and death. And now, God, let us not look past that. Let us not see that as something that's not important. Let us see the seriousness of it and the gloriousness of it and see that you have so many more great things for us. Because of what Jesus did, we are given promises that are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for Calvary. Thank you, Lord, for the blood that was shed in Jesus' name. Forgive us for our sins, Lord, as we forgive others so that we may not do this unworthily. In Jesus' name, amen.
Lord, have mercy on me. Let us pray together on our knees. Let us drink wine together on knees. We're not full with my face to rising. Son, oh Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Together on our knees. Let us praise God together all. When I fall with my face to rising sun, oh Lord, and mercy on me. thank God, we thank God that on the night on which Jesus was betrayed, never forget that, he even did it for Judas, forgiving him. He took the bread and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. The scripture says also, he took the cup and said, all of you drink of this. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. And all, as often as you do it, drink this in remembrance of me. Let us drink together. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we do show the Lord's death until, don't ever forget that, until, somebody say until, until. he comes. Yes. He's coming. Yes, he so let us celebrate his death solemnly, but let us also celebrate his death with joy. Yes. Because this is not the end, church. He's coming back. Amen. Yes. Amen. God bless you. Listen, listen, listen. We thank God for all of you who are able to come. Those of you who are watching at home, God bless you. We're going to ask that our deacons while they're up here give something. We want to make sure we can take care of our musicians who came and blessed us tonight. If you have something that you can share with us tonight, we want to ask that you would give.
just to, just to share with those of us who blessed us in song and those who uh, take care, make sure of our streaming, want to make sure we give something that we can uh, give to make sure that we cover what we've done tonight. Amen. want to give online go to newpilgrim.org <clears throat> click on the give online button you can give through paypal or give la oh sorry, sorry you can click <laughs> you can you can give through parasoft or or cash app always a pilgrim cash app always a pilgrim sunday if you uh, have your if you already filled out your coin your lint coins wait till sunday Oh, well, you can have it tonight already filled out. You can turn it in. Amen. All, all given. <clears throat> you can do that. Uh, but if you, if you want to wait till Sunday, give it on Sunday. Amen. praise in this place. All right. It's 803. Listen, we have a lot going on this weekend. We won't be next year. My prayer is that we can have a morning Thursday service and a good Friday service, but we wanted to make sure we build up to that, but look forward to having robust, as we are going to have a wonderful weekend, a robust Holy Week. So my prayer is for us to do that. So we'll talk about that as we get towards uh, our next year. But we're thankful for all that's going on. I think Dr. Goodwin, where you at? We still need volunteers. We need volunteers. We need volunteers. We need volunteers to help dance some of our art craft. <laughs> amen. Amen. So, amen. So pop. We got we got popcorn and snow cones covered, right? But we need volunteers for arts and crafts and other things, right? So please volunteer. We will be here. So what time volunteers should be here uh, Saturday? Nine? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Be here at eight o'clock on Saturday. And then <clears throat> we're going to come uh, Saturday after that. We're going to come back uh, at, at those of us who are in the play will be here at 430. That's right. Amen. Rise and shine. All right, 430. Amen. So I'm going to be here at 430. I ain't in the play though, but I'm gonna be here for <laughs> third. And uh, but my babies are, and so and I know we have many other babies and other people. We want to support them as much as we can. Amen. So we have a six o'clock play. Then we at eight o'clock we have our coffee and conversation. The DA is gonna be here, so we want to come and support that. And then at nine o'clock, somebody say nine o'clock. We're gonna have our first worship service. We're gonna be in here just like I got you out of here now. We're gonna do it much faster then. All right, so we're going to be out of here by, by try to be here by, by 10 o'clock. You should be headed to Sunday school. Amen? Amen? Sunday school at 10, and then we'll have our regular service at 11 a.m. We got that? We good? Y'all all right? All right. Look at, smile at somebody around the church. Smile, 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 smile. Smile, 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 smile. All right, all right. Let's, listen, let's be in prayer. There are many people who uh, have concerns. Uh, there's always something going on. 
I always get text messages, Pastor, pray for me, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor. So I want you to know that I have always, I'm always praying for you, but always prayer requests. So never get so caught up in your own stuff that you forget somebody else is going through too. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And that's what the cross teaches us. Let's stand. If you're able to stand. As we prepare to leave, we thank God for his death and resurrection, which we will celebrate on Sunday. And we, today we pause to meditate on the sacrifice of Jesus. So don't leave this place without a sense of gratitude for the fact that Jesus Christ died for you. Amen? Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of our God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us now and forevermore. And those who believe God is able to do it said, Amen. 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 Hug someone with some gratitude. Amen. God bless you.